Let us come to God in uh, prayer for the Word of God. We thank you, Almighty God, for your goodness and your grace upon us. And we thank you, Lord God, for technology, that through this we are able, Lord God, to uh, bring the message across, even through uh, many lands and seas across, to uh, reach our brethren. And we thank you, Lord God, that indeed your gospel is not chained. And because of this, uh, we can continue even uh, in this uh, pandemic that we are in. We are able to uh, serve you in this regard. So we thank you, Lord God, for the uh, blessing of uh, technology and the blessing of uh, each and everyone's uh, cell phone or tablet or laptop or what have you that we are able to uh, see each other and uh, fellowship with one another through this online thing so uh, we thank you father for your uh, love and mercy towards us and i pray once again uh, the help of the holy spirit that he being our teacher will guide us and give us illumination as we study a, a new book okay for, which is the uh, actually not the whole but at least we will study a, the uh, the mission of the lord jesus christ why he came down here on earth and we will look at passages in the gospel of luke we will not try to look uh, entirely at the book Per se, but at least uh, we'll be getting some of these uh, verses, and from these verses we will try to expound this in order for us to be able to understand its meaning. Why God, uh, or even the apostle uh, uh, Doctor Luke, I mean, uh, wrote this particular book. And so with this, we just would like to give praise and honor to the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, for He deserves all our praise. This in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'd like us to open our Bibles to, uh, to Luke chapter 3. Luke chapter 3. And we'll be reading from verse 4 to 6. Verse 4 to 6. Okay. So it says here, As uh, it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, A voice of one calling in the wilderness, Prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for Him. Every valley shall be filled in, Every mountain and hill made low, the crooked road shall become straight, the rough way is smooth, and all people will see God's salvation. So here, in order for uh, in order for uh, many of the Israelites during uh, John the Baptist's time. Many have to travel either by foot or by camel or by donkey or whatever means of transport, uh, transportation they had to a long, hot place in the wilderness. As I, will, as I was looking at the uh, map in, in the Bible, I was trying to just measure the distance between Jerusalem and this particular place where John the Baptist baptized the Lord Jesus Christ and many of the Israelites then. It would roughly be around 30 to 50 kilometers. Of course, there are mountain ranges and valleys and hills. So, uh, just uh, measuring it on a straight line, that would be around 30 kilometers. And if it's by the road that they take, it would probably reach up to 50 kilometers. And this 
they had to do. And for that matter, wouldn't the temple in, the, in Jerusalem be a much better place for the ritual washing of repentance? Maaring yan ang katanungan ng marami. Bakit kailangan pang pumunta dun sa, sa may uh, Jordan River at napakalayo? Sabi nga, wandering out to the wilderness, some may have wondered why John made the barren, rocky terrain his base of operations. We, we know for a fact, that John the Baptist was a man called by God and he was living in the wilderness and eating locust and honey as, uh, as food. Okay? So why did this holy man and prophet call Jerusalem to journey out to the Jordan and wander in the wilderness? Now the explanation may be found in the Old Testament. Wherein uh, Luke now illustrates the prophetic purpose of John's preaching in the wilderness by quoting from Isaiah. It says here, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. Luke 3 verse 4. So Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah had foretold that the wilderness would be the place of origin for Israel's new exodus. We know for a fact that the, in the olden times, during the time of Moses, that the Israelites had this, what, uh, what we call the exodus. That's why we have the book, the book of Exodus in the Bible. That they were leaving Egypt, where they were enslaved for 400 years, and they were now coming out to be a people of God, and God has promised them a place, and God has promised uh, Abraham even then, uh, 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 hundreds of years before Moses, that he is calling a people to himself. And that is why here Luke was trying to, to make a, uh, uh, a typology of that particular exodus in Egypt by the Israelites now here in uh, the Jordan, wherein the Israelites were going to be baptized and again will have a new exodus. But this exodus will be quite different precisely because we know that the Israelites were not able to follow the laws uh, of God. Uh, the, uh, the Torah, or ito yung sinasabi nga yung mga batas na binigay ni, ni Yahweh kay Moses na hindi nila naman masunod-sunod. And thereby, uh, makita natin that though they were called sons of God, okay, the Israelites in the Old Testament were called sons of God, but now there is going to be one specific person who is going to have this particular Exodus. So the main character here is not John the Baptist, not even the Israelites who are going to be baptized, but there is one particular person who is going to be baptized and will have his very own Exodus from the Jordan into Jerusalem. Okay? Or shall we say, in the olden times, the Israelites were in the desert going. To the promised land. Okay. Yeah. So. So the context. Of studying this passage. Is key. Okay. Susi po ito. Sa ating pong pag-aaral. Dito po sa ating nabasa. Ang sabi nga ng mga ilang scholars. Is that. Uh, maari daw na ang book of Isaiah. Ay sinulat ng dalawang authors. Whether that is true or not. Because we don't have uh, a very uh, keen uh, evidence to prove that there is. But at least we see that, there, uh, that the book uh, primarily is divided into two. Okay? The book of Isaiah is divided into two. The first part of Isaiah, which is chapter 1 to 39, was called the book of woes. Okay, the book of woes, hindi po the book of wow. Woes po ito, like yung sa Matthew uh, 
23, kung saan ay uh, nirebuke ni Jesus yung mga Pharisees. Woe to you, Pharisees and scribes. Yan. So, the first 1 to 39 books of Isaiah is the book of woes. Okay? Meaning to say, it is about the bad news that Israel will end up exiled for her sins. And the second half of Isaiah, which is from chapters 40 to 66, is known as the book of consolation because of the soothing words it imparts in contrast to the ominous and heart-wrenching warning of the first half. Yung first half, parang judgment. Second half, mukhang grace, mukhang mercy. Okay? Yun ang uh, uh, tinutukoy. So the book of consolation gave hope to the Jewish exiles that despite their travails, one day Yahweh would pardon their sins and liberate them from their captivity. Every Jew were taught of this. In the olden times, until the time of Jesus, they were told that th there's going to be a hope that is going to come and will rescue them from their travails or from their uh, sins. They will be pardoned. Then this is what the Jews of John the Baptist, they longed for, even the fulfillment of the second half of Isaiah. We know for a fact that uh, the, two, uh, the, king, the kingdom of Israel was divided into two, the northern and the southern, ten tribes to the north and two tribes from the south. The ten tribes did not uh, have their identity after their being exiled in Assyria. But those in Babylon, the southern kingdom, they were able to return back. And now during Jesus' time, okay, during Jesus' time, this likewise uh, ablazed their hearts. Why? Because though they were already back in their country, in the promised land, but they were under the rule of the Roman Empire. And so this was their wailing. This was their uh, prayer that one day they will be rescued and they will be free and liberated from uh, this uh, uh, occupation of, uh, of Rome. Yeah. So, so all the Jews of John's day knew that the first half of Isaiah had tragically taken place. This was during the time of their exile in Babylon. So alam na nila na, ah, nangyari na to, nangyari na to sa aming mga forefathers before. So they were all patiently waiting for the good news of the second half to be unfolded before their very eyes. And those who went into the wilderness to see uh, John the Baptist were... Kumbaga, hopeful. Wow, is this going to be the start of this promise on the book of consolation that Isaiah prophesied? Okay. So, by citing the uh, by citing the. Uh, Opening verses of Isaiah 40, Luke is claiming that John the Baptist marks the beginning of the good news. Okay, The Lord of history had finally opened up the book of consolation, the book that told the story of Israel's new exodus, of her return from exile. And now the fullness of prophetic time had come. But we know, I told a while ago, that Israel was not able to obey Yahweh, their God. But Christ fulfilled all of the law. Why? Because the Bible speaks of Jesus Christ as the fulfillment of the law. And thereby, He is the rightful claimant to be the true Israel. For Him now to make that particular exodus and perfect it during the time of his suffering at the cross at Calvary. 
and proving it by his resurrection from the dead and ascending into the heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. So makita natin dito, Israel, the ethnic Israel of the olden times and even during the time of Jesus, they were not able to perfect it. But Christ is the new is the true Israel, is the true son of God. Okay? And the only son of God, the only begotten son of God who has fulfilled this thing. And he is the one that is being prophesied by Isaiah and likewise now written by uh, by Dr. Luke. Now, why go out to the wilderness? Yan ang tanong. Because according to Isaiah, the wilderness was to be the stage where the new exodus would spring up. Now that Isaiah's prophetic voice had taken shape in John the Baptist, it became clear that the time had come for Israel to follow in the sandals of, of her forebears and make an exodus through the wilderness and across the Jordan. So John stirred up more than the waters of the Jordan with his baptizing. Hindi lang po siya inistir niya yung tubig doon na sa kanyang pagbabautismo. He stirred up the people's hope of a new exodus. And this time, not from Pharaoh, okay? Not from Pharaoh in Egypt or Caesar from Rome, but from Satan, okay? So, the question that begs to be asked, why wash in the Jordan? Why did John make Israel wash in the muddy waters of the Jordan? Why is it that this new story starts with Jews jumping into the Jordan in order to be baptized? And John, for all we know, was a prophet. And prophets were known for performing symbolic actions with rich prophetic meanings. For example, the prophet Jeremiah smashed a pot to symbolize the destruction of the temple. Hosea took a prostitute as a wife, Gomer, to signify how Israel was an unfaithful bride to Yahweh. And Ezekiel shaved with a sword, not for a closer shave, but to signify the impending invasion of Jerusalem. So prophets perform provocative acts, acts that were aimed at making a mark in the memory and bringing about a change of heart in their audience. So ganun po ang ginagawa ng mga propeta, especially noong unang mga panahon sa lumang tipan. And here we see one prophet in the New Testament. John's directing the people of Jerusalem and Judah into the Jordan was an action pregnant with meaning. Okay? Punong-puno. Parang buntis ito ng mga uh, meaning. So the Jordan was a religious and a national symbol for the Jews. Historically, the Jordan River is a very uh, prominent uh, place uh, from Old to the New Testament, we found many uh, events happening in this particular river. And at the climax of the first exodus, when Israel escaped from Egypt, Joshua led Israel through the Jordan long ago, marked Israel's release from Egyptian captivity and the beginning of Israel's possession of the promised land. Nung makakross po sila dun sa Jordan River na yan, it was a symbol because it was a sign that now they are free to enter into the promised land. Okay? Yun ang ibig sabihin niya. Now John was calling Israel to come back to the Jordan and re-enter the promised land. So yun ang kanyang panawagan, like their ancestors before them, Israel was to go out to the wilderness and then re-enter into the promised land. 
And John was offering Israel a fresh start, a new beginning. The crowds grew in anticipation and excitement for it looked like John was beginning the new exodus, the fulfillment of the prophetic promises made by Isaiah. And many wondered whether John might be the Messiah. Sabi nila, ha, ito na, baka siya na. Ito siguro yung Messiah. But if they were reading the Torah, if they were reading the Old Testament scripture, they would know that John the Baptist was not the Messiah, but was just a forerunner to bring in the Messiah. Okay? They thought he was the one to lead Israel through the new exodus and redemption. John, however, was not the new Joshua. Okay? He made it clear that he was simply preparing the way, saying in Luke 3.16, I baptize you with water, but he who is mightier than I is coming, the thong of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And with fire. Okay, Luke 3, 16. The mark of the true Messiah would be the Holy Spirit. And John announced that he was coming soon. If John is no Joshua who uh, led the Israelites in entering the promised land, he does not have other sandals to fill. Luke gives his reader an important clue that John is the prophetic prodigy of the prophet Elijah. See, John the Baptist is a prophetic prodigy of the prophet Elijah. Pagbabasahin po natin ang Luke chapter 1 verse 17, ang sabi po dyan, when the angel Gabriel announced to John's father, Zechariah, that he would have a son, who would do great things for God, he said that John would have the spirit and power of Elijah. So what is so significant about John's being a new Elijah? It just so happens that the final words of Malachi, the last prophet sent to Israel, predict that Elijah will return before the Messiah comes. Malachi chapter 4 verse 5. So, if one saw John as a type of Elijah, then clearly the time for the Messiah was at hand. It is worth noting that the last place Elijah goes to is the Jordan River. At the Jordan, as the heavens open to take Elijah up in a chariot of fire, he passes on a double portion of his share of the Spirit of God to his successor, Elisha. So if John is playing the role of Elijah, the expectation mounts that one is soon coming who will take the reins from John and possess a greater share of the power of the Spirit. And there is no better place to pass the baton to John's successor than at the Jordan. Yeah. So John now summons all of Israel to come out to the Jordan for baptism. Along with the rest of Israel, Jesus also came to the Jordan in the midst of the Judean wilderness. And Jesus went to be baptized, then not for private reasons, but as a man with a public calling. Hindi dahil siya ay makasalanan, gaya ng maraming nagpapabautismo kay John the Baptist who needs repentance, but as an Israelite faithful to the prophetic summons. Siya yung true Israel na siyang magfulfill ng lahat na hindi na fulfill ng bayan ng Israel. So Jesus did not need the baptism that John offered, but he submitted in order to take on the role of the suffering servant. Bakit? Bakit kailangan niya itong itake itong role ng suffering servant, the one whom Isaiah prophesied would be innocent and yet numbered with the transgressors, Isaiah 53, verse 12. Why? It is in order to bear their iniquities. Para kanyang pasanin ang mga pagkakasala ng mga taong ito, Isaiah 53, verse 11. 
So Jesus's uh, Je- Jesus's uh, Jesus's humble act of accepting baptism drew an immediate response from heaven. At anong response ng kalangitan? Now, when all the people were baptized and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form as a dove and a voice came from heaven, Thou art my beloved Son, with thee I am well pleased. Luke 3, 21-22 So the Father's words to His beloved Son Jesus Echo the ancient words spoken by God to the suffering servant in Isaiah, in what is known as the first servant song, Isaiah 42, verse 1 to 9. At the beginning of the servant's mission, it says, Behold my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. So as John noted, the spirit identifies the Messiah as the servant of the Lord. Yun ang pagkasulap ni propetang Isaiah. That this Messiah will be a suffering servant. With the outpouring of the Spirit, na Jesus now plays Elisha to John's Elijah. Kung si John ay parang si Elijah, na si Elijah pinasa niya yung baton kay Elisha, si John the Baptist naman, kanya na ngayon, ibinibigay, pinapasa yung baton kay Jesus, sapagat alam niya na siya ang, ay hindi ang Messiah, siya rin Later on, ay mapupugutan ng ulo under uh, King Herod and thereby, he needs now to bring this baton to the suffering servant, to the Messiah, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, who will now fulfill this particular exodus that will fulfill Matthew chapter 2. Oh, babasahin ko lang kung ano nakalagay po dun sa Matthew chapter 2. Para makuha po natin yan, ang sabi sa Matthew chapter 2, verse 15, And was there until, uh, 14 na lang mag, tayo mag-start, When he arose, he took the young child, si Joseph ang tinutukoy dito, He took the young child, the Lord Jesus Christ, and his mother Mary, by night and departed for Egypt, and was there until the death of Herod that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt I called my son. And sinasabi ko sa inyo kanina, Israel, during the time of Moses, were in Egypt. Okay? And they had this exodus going to the promised land. Now we see here, Matthew taking this particular uh, verse, in the Old Testament that talks about the fulfillment of what was spoken uh, through the prophet saying, Out of Egypt I called my son, referring to Jesus Christ. Not the nation of Israel, but Jesus Christ. Because he is the true Israel. He is the true son of the living God. And now... Jesus now starts his exodus. Kaya nga po, pagpasok niya pala ng Jerusalem, he was already lamenting. At nakita niya. Why? Because he saw what was to happen to the nation of Israel. Sabi nga niya, I am like a, a hen who wanted to gather his chicks, but you would not. Because you are a stiff-necked people, you, are a, you have so, so much stubborn hearts in you. And that is why, sabi niya, I now see, if this is going to happen to the green wood, referring to himself, then what would happen to the dry wood, which speaks of the nation of Israel, which is actually the judgment in AD 70, when the Roman legion under Titus Vespasian entered Jerusalem and destroyed the whole city. At nakakatakot po yan, yun nangyari dyan. Naging cannibal pa nga sila. Kinain nila yung kanilang mga anak 
para lang sila mabuhay kasi nagkaroon ng famine during that time. It Jesus saw that this that's why he wept for Jerusalem precisely because he saw the destruction of Jerusalem because of their hard-headedness, their stubborn hearts. And going back to our uh, study, the Holy Spirit now comes upon Jesus and anoints him in the Jordan River. Ayan. Okay. Yung pagdescend ng Holy Spirit, okay? Ay pagpapatunay na siya nga yung itinilaga. Siya nga yung pangako nung unang panahon pa na Mesaya. Now yet, how can we how can we be sure that Jesus was anointed by the Spirit when the word anoint is not found? in the baptismal account. Wala naman yung anointing dun. So the answer comes in the very next chapter of Luke, in chapter 4, when Jesus takes the scroll of Isaiah, okay, when he was there in the synagogue, and he reads aloud the prophetic word of Isaiah as his own declaring the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. Isaiah 61 verse 1, which is written in Luke 4, 18. So Jesus understands that at His baptism, the Father anointed Him with the Holy Spirit. In the sequel to His Gospel, the Acts of the Apostles, okay, itong ating pinag-aralan sa, sa ating iglesia, Luke records how Peter referred to Jesus' baptism as the time when God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Acts 10, 38. So with the anointing of the Spirit, Jesus can now be called the Messiah. For in Hebrew, Messiah literally means anointed one. Okay? In Hebrew, in the Old Testament language, yung salitang Messiah sa Greek, Christos, ay yung salitang Anointed One. So Jesus is called the Christ, which is the Greek word for the Messiah, because He was anointed in the power of the Holy Spirit at His baptism in the Jordan. Therefore, Christ is not a family name as many think it is. Jesus Christ. No. Rather, it is a title. Jesus the Savior. Jesus the Messiah. Jesus the Anointed One. So from the moment that Jesus emerges from the waters of the Jordan, He is the Christ, the Messiah. Not without reason is He named Jesus, which is the Greek word for Joshua. So nakita rin natin yung correlation ano that Joshua was a type of Christ that he was leading the Israelites into the promised land. So yung pangalan niyang Joshua means Jehovah saves or Yahweh saves and pangalan din ni Jesus means Yahweh saves or Jehovah saves. And here we see the new Joshua has come to lead Israel through the, the Jordan and into the new promised land. At yan ang titignan natin. Is this the promised land na geographically located now in Israel? I believe it is not. Okay? It is far more than that. And so, sa kanan natin malalaman. Okay? The Messiah was the one whom the prophets foretold would redeem Israel and bring about the new exodus. It was known that the Messiah would be a king. So, ganun din pala. Ito palang Messiah will likewise be a king. Hindi lang siya suffering servant, but he is going to be a king because the Lord's anointed, or Messiah, was a title for the king of Israel. Makikita po natin yan sa 1 Samuel 10 verse 1. After the prophet Samuel anointed Saul as king of Israel, he told him that the one of the signs that the Lord had truly anointed Saul king over Israel was that the Spirit of the Lord will come mightily upon him. 1 Samuel 10 verse 6. So this is the same sign 
that marks Jesus as the Messiah. For the Spirit comes upon Him at His baptism, and Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit. Luke 4, verse 1. Kaya nga tayo, pag nag-aaral tayo sa New Testament, we have to relate it back into the Old Testament because nandun, nasa Old Testament, yung mga tinutukoy nung mga uh, sumulat na ito sa bagong tipan. Okay? And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, Luke 4, 14. And Jesus is the Christ because the Spirit of the Lord is upon Him. And immediately after Jesus' baptism and anointing in the Spirit, Luke gives us Jesus' genealogy. Luke 3, 23 to 28. Sa kanyo na po babasahin yan. Napakadami pong pangalan. Pero one thing I'd like you to, to see in this particular the, uh, genealogy is that one of the key aspects of the genealogy is that it proves that Jesus is the royal line of David. Is of the royal line of David. Why give the genealogy at this point in the story and not earlier during the infancy narrative just like what Matthew has done? Inuna niya muna yung genealogy. Okay? Anong nakita natin sa genealogy dun kay Matthew? Huminto lang po yan kay Abraham. Okay? Pero dito kay Luke, Hindi lang po huminto kay Abraham, dumiretso siya hanggang kay Adam, our first ancestors. And what does that prove? Okay? Ano ang importansya pag binasa natin yung genealogy dyan sa book of Luke? Luke places that genealogy here to highlight Jesus' royal status as an heir of David. He can truly be the Messiah, the King of Israel. And by, sabi nga, pag ating i-juxtapose itong mga ito, ihihilera natin, ito pong baptismal sin niya, okay? Nauna po yung baptismal sin and then later makita natin pasok yung genealogy after. Look now, underscores the parallel between Jesus and David who was anointed in the power of the Spirit when he became king. Makita natin yan sa 1 Samuel 16 verse 13. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. So here makita natin si Jesus, si David, parehas na inanoint, parehas na hari, nasa linya ni David, si Jesus. So, Kaya natin nasasabi, Jesus is the greater David. Okay? Jesus is the son of David. And Jesus is the Lord of David as well as seen in the book of Acts. As, as the Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Bakit sasabihin ng isang Lord sa isang Lord, ibig sabihin lang yun na hindi si David ang tinutukoy dito kundi si Jesus. Okay. So Jesus is the son of David, Luke 3.31, the anointed heir and therefore the Messiah, the King of Israel. Not only that, okay, not only that, but sabi ko nga, by tracing Jesus' genealogy all the way back to Adam, Luke implies that Jesus' reign will extend not only over the family of Abraham, but over all humanity. Yan. Yun yung extension ng pag ng ating Panginoon. Yan. Though the promise was given to Abraham and sinasabi nga dun sa Galatians uh, chapter 3, gusto ko lang puntahan yun, which is so important for us to, to understand. In Galatians uh, chapter 3, ang sabi dyan, verse uh, 16, Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He does not say, and to seeds, as of many, but as of one, and to your seed, who is Christ. See? So, ang tinutukoy, yung seed na yan, manggagaling kay Abraham, okay? And all the families of the world will be blessed through you, sa ang yan ang pangako ni Yahweh kay Abraham. And that can only happen through 
the coming of the suffering servant, which is likewise the king, who is likewise the true Israel, who has now made this new exodus, going to the cross at Calvary, fulfilling his mission as the Messiah. So all of Adam's family will be redeemed through the mission of the Messiah. But, hindi ko sinasabing all people of the world will be redeemed, but only those who, uh, whom God is going to call His people. Ang Diyos, pagdating po sa kaligtasan, when it comes to our salvation, it, it, is, it is God who calls, it is God who chooses, Siya po ang pumipili, Siya po ang humihirang, okay? Siya po ang tumatawag, and thereby we don't add anything to it. And so those who have put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ will become part of this Adam's family that they call, or what we call God's family, okay? That in the future, we will see nations, tribes, tongues, okay? will be part of this uh, new heaven and a new earth that God is going to establish. And so with this, sabi nga, no matter how difficult our times may be during this time of pandemic, if you are a child of God, sabi ko nga, if you are a child of God and you possess eternal life and you understand the gospel fully, then let me tell you, you are so blessed because you are assured, you are secured. While the rest of the world, okay, nangangapa po sila sa kadiliman, hindi alam kung anong gagawin. Marami na po nawalan ng trabaho. Ito pa, hindi pa nawawala ang COVID-19 virus na ito. Marami ang namamatay, marami nagihirap, marami nagugutom. Pero pag ikaw, anak ng Diyos, ito ang panghawakan mo, kapatid. Brethren, Try to really take this to heart that our Lord Jesus Christ did it all for us. And that is why we can praise Him. We could just worship Him in all adoration because just as Isaiah's good news has come in the person of Jesus and through His ministry, Consolation and comfort will be given to all who heed His voice. So here, makita natin ang Panginoong Diyos, napakabuti niya. Dapat lang siya ipurihin. To Him be all the glory. Let us pray. Almighty God and Father, we thank you, Lord God, for your word. And I pray that, Lord, in this uh, new uh, series that we are uh, discussing, that uh, everyone will be able to uh, be attentive and be able to really grasp the message and likewise the, not to miss uh, these topics until the end uh, so that we could really see how God really unfolded His glory through a meta-narrative, meaning to say through a storyline from beginning to end, from Genesis to Revelation, proving that He is God and sending His only begotten Son to die on the cross for our sins so that in the end, we will have not just eternal life, but we will have, uh, we will have that, uh, that name tag that says, I am a child of God, I am a son of the living God because my Jesus has done it for me. To Him be the glory. Amen. Amen. So, magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Thank you, Pastor Mike, for that uh, wonderful...